Good everyone, welcome to today's video and today we have a review on the Key 96 or as I nickname it, the Silver Angel. This thing is, well this makes my scar rocket blush, let's put it that way. And pretty much testing them, well testing this alongside the XP-50, the XP-50 doesn't beat it by a lot and let's put it this way, if I see this thing about XP-50 I'm going to have to respect it a little more. So this aircraft costs 1,600 Golden Eagles. Do I think it's worth it given it's a rank 3 premium and it's in the same territory as Jappa Wolf, the A7M1 and other aircraft like that? Personally, I'd only get it at a discount. 800 Golden Eagles is more than fair for this sort of aircraft and personally speaking, I think you'd be better off for the most part getting yourself Jappa Wolf, the A7M1, or even TARDIS Key 61. Now, before anyone jumps in the comments early, because quite, quite a few people do that for some reason, um, I do not think this is a bad aircraft, before anyone says that. I don't think this is a bad aircraft. I think this is an incredible aircraft. The problem is, is being a Japanese aircraft and having Japanese guns, even on my ping, these guns are 50-50. And as you all know, I get 25 to about 30 ping most days. And I just don't think that this aircraft has the armament, the ammo load, to really warrant paying that much for a premium. Because if we go to the premium tech tree, we have other vehicles that are arguably better. We have the Tardis, which I'm probably going to pick up if it comes up in War Bonds or something. We have the A7M1. And we also have Jappa Wolf. If we go a little bit higher, we have stuff, well, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I think it's the j 5 that Flight likes, although the cannon ammo is not to my liking. And if we go lower, we have the Jap Serve, we have the Key 44 Otsu Shoki, and we also have the 1 and 9 E7. As much as I think this aircraft is good, I just can't recommend it over any of the other rank 3 premiums. Purely on the basis that the guns let it down, and the fragile nature lets it down. Now I know what some people are going to say, hold on a minute, the A7M1 is let down by that, and so is TARDIS. Yeah, but TARDIS is based off the Key 61 high, and I tend to take a bit more of a beating in that. Same with the A7, I've taken hits in the A7 from... All different types of weapons and it's not been shot down so th this this thing just feels too fragile but am I saying it's a bad bird not in a million years this is an incredible plane I just don't think it's worth the 1600 golden eagles if you're a collector I'd just wait for a sale personally speaking so let's get into the aircraft and let, well I'm gonna go over a bit of history for this aircraft first as you'll notice by the engines, these engines look a little bit familiar to you twin engine heavy fighter pilots of Japan. This aircraft is actually based off the Kai 102, one of the ground attackers. And as you'll notice, there is no back gunner. Yeah, this... I'm that used to having a back gunner in Japanese aircraft. I've learned the MG they tend to put in the back quite well. Not having one was a bit weird, but it still... I'd rather have the extra performance in this aircraft than have a back MG, but that's my opinion. And, well, as you can tell, being a Japanese plane, it doesn't come with a lot of armor. We have no frontal bulletproof glass for the pilot, which is rather a big weakness. We have a 12mm plate in the front, just behind the 37mm cannon, which is... Actually, it's actually got a pretty good rate of fire. And then we have a 16mm plate behind him. That's not a lot of protection. I mean, the 16mm plate is actually quite good, but you're fighting a lot of 50 cals, and yeah, this this ain't gonna work. But it's it's not the armor that or the pilot that you have to worry about. It's the actual wings themselves, as we'll go into the X-ray. So we'll start out with the engines. We are powered by two Nakajima HA112 14-cylinder radials with 1240 horsepower on. 100% throttle and 1550 with WEP. That's quite a big increase and these engines are pretty dang good. 
In terms of overheating, I'd actually argue this is better than Skyrocket, because Skyrocket does tend to overheat whatever it feels like. This one felt a little more forgiving. Going into the main weakness of this aircraft, and as you can tell, she's covered in fuel. Fuel tanks here, fuel tanks here, there's an oil court, the, the oil systems are hard to miss, and there's also one in the front of the engine. And these fuel tanks, specifically these two here, are a huge letdown. And as you already know, XP-50 has its fuel stored in the fuselage. And I'd rather have that, because then the cannons and the armor plating might circle per hit. With this, you're unlikely to. So let's go into the guns of this aircraft. In terms of the lower guns, we are armed with two 20mm Ho-5 cannon with 200 rounds each. With the fire rate that these things have, you ain't going to stay in the fight very long. Same goes for the 37mm cannon. This is a Ho-203 cannon with only HE shells, carrying 25 rounds with a fire rate of 300 rounds a minute. Again, this ain't going to stay in the action for long. But... As an interceptor, the thing does a very good job of. The only trouble is, it fights B-17s, and yeah, whilst you will kill a B-17, it'll probably kill you first. That's the main issue. At least in Skyrocket, I can fight 264s quite comfortably with it. The guns are better, the climb rate is arguably better, and XB-50 can take a bit more of a hit. This can't. Now sure, in this battle that you're going to see today, it was my fault the aircraft was destroyed, not the plane. I committed when I shouldn't have done. It was my fault, not the plane. Do not blame the plane for the incident that's what the battle that's going to happen. It was my fault. But at the end of the day, we all learnt from it. At the end of the day, I mean, you're going to see the battle and you're going to see what I did wrong. And, well, I've learnt from it. So that's what matters here. So... Let's get into the battle and let's take a look at the Key 96, also known as the Silver Angel. Don't get me wrong, I do like this thing, but compared to the other Japanese premiums at this BR, I couldn't recommend it over it. I know that's me, well, that may seem silly to some of you, but that's just how it felt to me. So as you can tell, this is a 16 minute battle, but most of the action takes place towards the mid part. And well, this team was not very good, let's put it that way. As you saw down there, there is a BV-238 who chose the airfield spawn. He requests escort, which is, he's, he's gonna get an escort, let's put it that way. And as you can tell, we've got struggle bosses on my team, we've got 111 bombers, we've got a D5 with bombs. This is not looking good already. Um, this is not exactly a team that I would consider to be great. And given some of what the pilots did on my team, I'm surprised the team did what they did. Let's put it that way. So as you can tell, we're just four and a half minutes into the game and I'm nearing 7k. This thing has an incredible climb rate, just like Skyrocket. However, dealing with a unidentified flying object, such as the Yak-3, can actually be pretty hard. And as you saw there, this guy knows what he's doing. But as good as the Yak-3 is in the vertical, he won't keep up with this thing. Now as you see on the in the chat, um, one of the 217s actually just got team killed by the other 217 heavy fighter and it's just getting worse and worse for us overall. The enemy team have only lost two aircraft, we have lost six. So that gives you an idea. Again, sorry for the sound bugs, this is on Gaijin's end, I cannot do anything about that. So, that that's not my fault, that is Gaijin. I don't fix the sandbox around here, they do, and they never get around to it for months at a time. So I decided to ignore the Yak-3 
free for a moment and go for this American 109. And I'm only using the 20s and I'll go for the pilot snipe, which I end up getting for kill number one. Six and a half minutes in and I've just got my first kill. But look at our team list compared to the enemy team. And as you can tell, this not only is the team toxic in chat, they're also pretty useless. I mean, some of them have at least tried to fight and some of them have got kills. But the majority of them died doing nothing. And it's only going to get worse for us. So I'm trying to engage the Act 3 here, and as you can tell, it's A, it's quite hard, and B, I've got other targets to think about. So I decided to leave the Act 3 alone for the moment, and try and see if I can kill off the swarm, as you can see there. I'm trying to let the team know that we've got more important aircraft to focus on, but they're not going to pay attention. As you're going to notice, this team is destined to fail, and... There's only so much I can do. And well, that's what happens when the 37 connects. Kill number two. As you saw though, the fire rate of the 37mm is insane. But, yeah, this, this is certainly a cannon that is very hit and miss. But having that extra fire rate is actually pretty interesting to have. But as you can tell, it's down to two A21s, a Yak-3, a PE-3, a P-63 is already dead, and a Spitfire. Versus me in the Kia 96, a Dota 17N1, and an A6M3. This should be interesting. But of course, as previously mentioned, I do balls this up, we don't win, and I, I did feel annoyed about it, because I knew... I, I, I pretty much was hopeful that I could have won it, but at the end of the day, I fucked up, so it didn't happen, but this is a loading curve for us all. I decided to target the Act 3 first, and down he goes for kill number 3. I pull it into the vertical to dodge the A21, and no matter how good that thing is in terms of a UFO, it ain't keeping with this. This thing is more of a UFO. And we start engaging in a slight turn fight. Now for a twin engine heavy fighter, this thing does actually turn rather well. However, this geezer doesn't seem to understand the concept of a tree. And is about to learn that the hard way. Because he nearly flew into a tree that enables me to turn in harder and get some shots. And well, he's about to meet the squirrels. Kill number four. And as you can tell, the team is now down to just me and the 217. And the enemy team is down to the A21, the P3E, and the Spitfire. I thought this was winnable. But as previously mentioned, I fucked up. And shit happens, is all I'll say. Everyone fucks up at some point. But it wasn't helped by the fact that we had also a douchebag on the enemy team. As you can tell, Bartek is camping his runway. Lovely. This this is just lovely. I'm just going to put it at four times speed. And I even say in chat, go ahead and land Spitfire, I ain't going to vault you. Because I don't do that shit. Why we don't play that, as Harry would say. Um, he's probably going to say, stop stealing my bits for saying that. But, sorry mate, go steal your bits, they're good. Um, <laughs> but... As previously mentioned, this this is going to end badly, but at least I killed the flipping runway camper. I'm sick and tired of these people. Um, runway campers seriously need to be dealt with, but Kaiju's doing nothing about them. And I'm just getting really bored of dealing with runway campers. Because as you can see, I get in close and this guy's about to turn back. And because he's a runway camper, I see red. And, well, this thing is attracted to him like a bull, so I want to I wanna give him the horns and make sure he knows that I ain't tolerating that bullshit. So he breaks underneath, does a split S to head back towards his airfield to camp, and I decided, you know what, fuck you, you're not getting back to that airfield. 
So I gun the throttles and start coming in to chase him. But obviously I don't know where he's going to end up. The P3 is coming in now. But he pulls up into the vertical. I get a hit with the 20s but not the 37. And the P3 is trying to use his back gunner to try and get me to shake off the A21. But it ain't happening. I'm staying on this son of a bitch and I'm making sure that the shots connect. He tries to dodge but big fat fuck you. Kill number five. And this is where I fuck up. But unlike some people, I'm going to show it. The P3 is coming at me head on. I'm thinking, okay, I've not got a lot of ammunition left. But I might be able to get away with it. And I'll go for the head on. But I stayed on too long. And this is where the fragile nature of this aircraft really comes in. A single Shikas machine gun bullet hits my fuel tank. And that's me done. I'm pretty certain you can guess what happened next. Um, unfortunately, we did not have any marshmallows on board. But we ended up losing that match. And I felt a bit bummed out. But end of the day though, folks, you're not going to win every match. And if you make a mistake, you'll have instances like that. But like I say, I don't think this aircraft is bad. I just think the other premiums are better, personally speaking. But... That ain't gonna stop me from flying this thing a couple more times, that's for definite. Because A, I need to do the market distinction, and B, eventually I'll have to do a premium series flight on it. But anyway, I'm gonna let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Key 96, and I will catch you all on the next one.